What is up everyone? Welcome to 90 Degrees, a channel about elevating your creative career. My name is Alberto Orsini and if you haven't done so already, you know what to do. Please consider subscribing. Have you had your coffee yet? Because today we're going to be talking about buttons and I know it's a little teeny tinsy tiny subject uh, but a lot of people don't know the power of Figma and how you can use variants to create extremely powerful buttons that you can switch states and you can change properties to your advantage. So without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, so I'm here in Figma and uh, I've created this uh, sample document and nothing in it yet. So I'm gonna get started on creating my buttons. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press T on my keyboard uh, to type my label. So I'm just gonna say label and I'm going to adjust it. So right now I have it set to center. Uh, this has auto width and I want it to vertically align in the middle, uh, my baseline shift to be in the middle because this is gonna be a button. So it's gonna be surrounded or encompassed by a container. So in order to create that container, I'm actually gonna use auto layout. So on my keyboard, I'm gonna press shift A and you're gonna see that it created now a frame around my label. You can also see here on the left side panel that now I have the auto layout icon identifying it as such. I'm gonna rename that, so command R on my keyboard. I'm gonna rename that to button because today is a fantastic day where we're actually gonna be renaming our layers. Let's do this guys. So uh, I've renamed it to button. I wanna be able to alter the styling on this. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a fill to this container. That fill is gonna be, I already had some colors here, so I'm just gonna select this sort of uh, royal blue, electric blue, I guess electric blue. And uh, I know my colors. Um, and I'm gonna change the label to white so that you can actually read it, okay? So now that I have that, I'm also gonna have some sort of uh, corner radius to 10. I'm, I'm liking how that's looking. And I'm gonna make some adjustments here because of how I want this label to behave and sort of dictate what the button is gonna behave like when I type something longer than label, etc. So I'm gonna open this up and this is gonna be my alignment and padding uh, window in here. I'm gonna make sure that I'm selecting the center and this is really just how the container itself is treating the objects within it. And I'm gonna change the padding just to something that I'm a little bit more comfortable with and that falls into my typical eight point grid with four point variants. So I'm gonna say that at the top, I'm gonna have 12 and on the sides, I'm gonna, top and bottom is gonna be 12. The sides is gonna be a nice 16 for me. And I think that's nice and comfortable. It's a snug uh, button. I wouldn't necessarily uh, call this my main button, uh, but it's kind of like a sm small button that I'm gonna be using throughout my UI. Now that we have that, uh, this is a frame with auto layout. I wanna convert that to a component or a symbol if you're coming from Sketch. Um, and the way I do that is on my keyboard, I'm gonna uh, press Command Option K and you see how the label on that, it's not only showing me the auto layout, uh, but the, the little icon here represented is that this is now a component. It's my component button and I have uh, metadata that I can add here uh, to the right, which I'm not gonna do that right now. However, I know that a button is gonna have several states. I'm gonna have my primary button, I'm gonna have uh, uh, secondary buttons, I may have hover states, I may have focus states. There's a bunch of things that we can do here by using variants. So let's try that out real quick. With the button selected, I'm gonna go over here to variants and I'm gonna hit on this plus icon you'll see that it's gonna create this uh, sort of element around it. And now this is called variant number two. The first one automatically changed to default. So this property number one, which right now is called property number one, I'm going to call it icon. And just leave it at that for now. I'm gonna add a new uh, text element into here. So I'm gonna press T on my keyboard. I'm gonna type search. 
right? And that's going to be our example. Right now, this is set to Roboto Medium. I'm going to change this. In this case, I'm using uh, I'm using Font Awesome to draw my icons, but you can really, you can, it doesn't have to be text. You can, you can use an icon that you have, an SVG, a PNG, anything that you want to use really. But in this case, I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to go with Font Awesome and not brands, but I'm going to select pro. And now I have this nice little magnifying glass icon. I'm going to change that to white as well, because that's the color of my label. And I'm going to go ahead and drop that in. Now I want to change several properties uh, from this, because I think the label is a little bit too far away from the icon. So I can click on that. Uh, and I can actually uh, set the auto layout spacing between items to eight. Again, I'm trying to stick uh, within my eight point grid. So right off the bat, I have um, a version of this as a default. And I have a version of that with icon kind of want to change that a little bit and you'll see why in a second. But the property one, I'm going to change that to with icon. First of all, let, let's 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 see what it looks like right now. So if I come here to this other thing and I drop it in the UI, right, I, I go over here instead of layers, I switch to assets, I see my components. So this is the button that we've just created. I drop it in. I can see that right now this doesn't make any sense because it says with icon. So right now it's set to default and if I switch it to icon, it switches to that. Now that works. That's functional. You know, we can we can leave it at that. However, one of the things that Figma introduced, which I'm super excited about, especially for situations like this, is the ability to use booleans. And uh, with the ability to to use booleans, uh, we, we're going to see that in practice in just one second. So I'm going to come here, right? And I'm going to select the overall uh, encompassing area with with my components. So my variant, instead of being called, um, you know, I'm going to call it with icon, but instead of being default and icon, I'm going to say that the default, which is my button at the top is false, meaning that it has no, uh, no icon. And the one that is called icon, I'm going to call that true. And what's going to happen now, it's going to be very special. I'm going to be able to in the same button, uh, you'll see that now it has this switch icon to the right where I can say no icon or with icon. So I know now that I have my booleans uh, set up and I have that switch to add the icon or remove the icon. I know that I want to also do secondary and potentially tertiary flavors of these buttons. So the way to do that is I'm going to go here up to the bounding box around my buttons and under variants, I have this little three dot icons with more options. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to go ahead and add a new property, not a new variant, because that's only going to duplicate, you know, my, my primary or default. So I'm going to add a new property and I'm going to say that this is called hierarchy. And hierarchy is going to establish that these that I have selected at the moment, they're going to be my primary, right? And now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate You see that this is now with icon is set to false hierarchy primary with icon set to true hierarchy primary. I'm going to duplicate both of these by selecting them. So I click on one, press shift on my key or hold shift on my keyboard, click on the other one. I'm going to hit command D to duplicate them. Obviously, uh, now it has uh, this property is mixed, which we know because we have one with icon and one without. But in terms of hierarchy, we're going to uh, set both of these to secondary, which is very cool. We, we have them. We have them changed. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the overall styling of these to be kind of like my secondary button. So first of all, I'm going to change the label to that electric blue color. I'm going to change the background fill of that to kind of like a lighter color. And that's going to be the style of my secondary, uh, my secondary buttons. I'm going to do the same to the one with icon, literally exactly the same as what I'm doing as what I did in the other one, just to make sure that we have that. So now again, if I go to my UI, I'm not only able to uh, switch with icon or without icon, but I'm able to duplicate this. And I can say uh, this is search 
and that behaves as expected. And this one, I don't want any icon on it. And I want to switch it to secondary and I want it to say cancel. Oops. And there we go. This is how you can quickly create buttons that have different properties and options that you can turn on and off and switch between hierarchy, switch between states, uh, and it all happened in a matter of minutes. And this is the power of using variants and booleans within Figma. If you like this video, please give me a like. Make sure you leave a comment below. Have you been using this or do you plan to use this in your design? And uh, again, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.